looking for the affiliate marketing? What's that? Are you looking for affiliate marketing? Yeah. It's right here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Right. I'll be right back. Yep, and I'm fine with that. No, you're fine. It's Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets a grace period on Sunday at 9 o'clock. Every time I speak in this room, it's so intimidating. I always pretend I'm the keynote speaker. <laughs> I mean, if they're going to stick you in a room like this, you might as well pretend, right? I know. It's like the first time I spoke in here, I'm like, ooh. I didn't realize how many people were in here until, like, afterward. Because, like, I was like, everything got tuned out. Like, <laughs> yep. Like, you know, talking to people, but I wasn't. We were waiting just for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Now I think we're good. It was this morning. Okay. Okay. Is this my microphone? Yep. Okay, I got to use this for the recording. So. This is Affiliate Marketing 101. Everybody awake? Welcome. Good morning. <laughs> anyway, um, well, this is Stacey Carlson. I'm here for the end of the day as soon as she gets her, her mic put on there. Maybe. So, you can put it there. There you go. Can everybody awesome. hear me okay? Oh, there is an echo. <laughs> okay. If I can remember how to do this. Okay, the first question I want to ask is, for those of you who are here, how many thought this was for an affiliate? You want to promote somebody else's product? Promote somebody else's product? Okay. How many of you um, wanted to create your own affiliate program? Meaning that you're the merchant and you have the product. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I kind of figured. Um, so I actually included an extra slide at the end of this. So I originally planned um, uh, as the merchant side.
However, the more I thought about it, I realized people were probably gonna show up wanting to be the affiliate side. So I will actually cover both of those. Um, so we're gonna cover it all. Uh, my name is Stacy Carlson. I work for a software company called Smile. We do not make braces, just so that you know. Uh, that's a common, oh, you make those braces. No, um, we are a 15 year old software company. We make two products. We make PDF Pin, which is in the Adobe Acrobat world. Um, we also make a program called Text Expander, and I'll explain Text Expander because it works into my workflow. Um, so let's talk about what affiliate marketing is. It is a partnership between a merchant, the person who has the product. So an analogy that everybody should know, it's Amazon. Amazon is a merchant. And then with an affiliate, it's somebody who's running a website. And basically, the affiliate puts a link on their site, and every time there's a sale, they receive a commission. So whether it's Amazon or WP Engine, any time that affiliate makes a sale off of the ad or information that they have on their site, they receive a commission. <laughs> okay. There are three people that matter. The merchant, again, Amazon. The affiliate, which is the blog owner. And then the customer. The customer is the one who's actually gonna purchase. These are the three people that I owe, and I should explain. I am the affiliate manager for Smile. I should have explained that one. Um, I've been doing affiliate marketing for about four years, so this is my wheelhouse. So these are the three people that I pay attention to the most. It's, it's the ones who matter. Is this, okay. So how does affiliate work? So you as a blog owner, you're the affiliate, you put a link on your website and it's trackable. So a visitor comes to your site and they click on that link and it puts a cookie on their computer that says, hey, Bob Smith listed this on their website. They have tracking code. Go ahead and follow this for an X amount of days. And if a purchase is made within that time, then they get the commission off of it. So it starts with the affiliate on their webpage. It can also be on social media. It can be on Reddit. It can be on Twitter. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, where it's at as long as that tracking mechanism is somewhere in that world. Uh, from there, it goes to the customer. So the customer clicks on the link, they um, make the purchase, and everybody wins. Because a merchant now has a sale, and the affiliate gets a commission. Any questions on that so far? And this is, this is we have a small group, so if you have questions through this, just let me know. We can go ahead and pause. So who should have a program? So for those of you in the audience who want to start your own program, you need to have a product. Um, if you don't have a product, you don't have anything to sell. So that's pretty obvious. You have to have a following. Um, it doesn't have to be a huge following, but you have to have traffic. Uh, you have to have time to nurture your program. Um, this is one thing that I see a lot of the affiliate managers or site owners, merchants doing that kind of irritates me is that they'll start a program and then they ignore it. The problem with that is how do you build trust with people that you don't talk to on a regular basis? And that's part of my job is that I'm in contact with my affiliates at least once a month, if not more, on a direct direct. And I send newsletters as well so that they're always hearing from me. Um, and you also have to have some sales on your product. So those are the four key components in regards to starting a program. Uh, so, you can host it yourself. WP Affiliate um, integrates directly into WordPress. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, the downfall of hosting it yourself is that you have to cover all the taxes, and that's kind of a pain. Um, basically, uh, you have to get W-9s from everybody. Any affiliate who's joining you, you have to send out 1099s at the end of the year, and that's a real pain in the butt. Um, I prefer to go through a platform that takes care of all that, so, uh, Smile is actually on ShareASale, which is a platform that does all of that. It's a big network, everybody comes, joins it. They take care of all the taxes, you don't have to worry about it. Um, and it also gives me an opportunity to have a bigger audience of affiliates to pick from. Because if I host it myself, they're only joining my program. Whereas if they go to ShareASale and join, they're joining to, like WP Engine is on ShareASale. 
So I can actually see affiliates that are partnered with WF, uh, WP Engine and actually recruit them into mine. Yeah. Sure. Uh, you don't need a plug-in because basically all it is is a tracking code. Yeah, so you just go to their website and they'll actually, you can create a, your custom tracking code or you can go ahead and just grab theirs. And it's super easy, it's just copy and paste. CJ's commission coming, right? Yes, yeah. It has been around and I'm not for sure how much longer it's going to be around. Really? <laughs> There's its, impact is the one, um, for the merchant side, impact is very expensive. However, they're, they're like the, enterprise level, uh, where share sale has a more organic, uh, holistic love for the affiliate, whereas impact is more about the money, if that makes any sense. But impact is a big dog right now. Um, um, I like share sale because again, they really think about the affiliates and they give them a lot of tools. The setup. So, you decide you want to create a program, and I, again, I know a lot of you aren't in this realm, but for me, when I set up our program, I needed to understand how much commission I was gonna give. I give a flat rate commission to everybody. We give 20%. So that means that if you put a link for Text Expander on your website and advertise Text Expander and you get a sale, you get 20% of that sale. However, I give bonuses. And I do this because the people who actually interact with me on a regular basis, who actually care, they get more money. Because I know that this is their business um, and they're more involved in regards to the day-to-day -day running of that business. So some of my affiliates can get up to 50%. Um, for me, it's really important to give those bonuses. But always start low work your way up because it's really hard. If you come in and start your program at 50% and then realize you just screwed up because you can't, you're, you're losing money, it's really hard to go back down. Uh, again, give bonuses to act affiliates who are active. Um, again, I, affiliates don't work for me. Um, I work for the affiliates, plain and simple, because you guys are doing the hard work. I'm just giving you links. So in my world, I wanna make sure that I'm giving back to the people who um, I'm working for um, and set up a system and stick it stick with it um, and then terms you have to decide what terms and when you're joining affiliate programs this is an important thing to look for I do not accept any affiliate into my program who's going to buy ads on my name that's my job uh, my company buys the ads I don't want to compete with my affiliates in regards to that so that's part of our terms we do not allow you to purchase any ads to sell our product. Um, so look at the terms. Most cases, there's nothing in the terms that's gonna be like a huge red flag, but it's something that you wanted to look at. Also, trademark bidding, keyword bidding, I don't allow that either. Again, our company does that. We don't wanna compete with our affiliates in regards to that. Do you find that still happens? Oh, a lot, yep. How, yeah. how much effort is it monitoring that? Um, I have a program that actually does that. Um, and it just, it keeps an eye out. Uh, I don't understand how it does it. It just sends me a report. And basically, um, we kick them off because it's, to, it's, it's the one thing that I would actually kick. Fraud, and then, because I, pardon? Yeah, it costs, it, yeah, it costs us money. And again, it's competing against ourselves and we don't want to do that. Um, who are affiliates? So I break them, other managers will break it down differently. These are my four main ones. So we have content creators. Content creators, you guys who have blogs, you are my best friends. I love you guys. Because you're creating backlinks to us, you're creating quality content, you are putting time and energy into creating an article that is actually readable. 98% um, of my affiliates are content creators. Um, I have one coupon site as an affiliate because they follow the rules. Um, we kicked out um, all of our, because when I took over the program, it was heavily coupon site. We kicked all of them out because they simply couldn't follow the rules. Like, um, we asked that you don't hide the coupon code. Uh, they were hiding the coupon code. Or we asked them not to have coupons on their site that were not legit because it makes our customers mad. They were putting coupon codes on their site that weren't legit. So I'm like, I don't have time to babysit you, so we're gonna go ahead and just remove you. So we don't have coupon sites except for the one who follows the rules. 
Review sites. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with review sites because they're all fake. Um, I should take that back. They're not all fake. There's some that are legit, but the majority of them are fake because when you go to a review site, they have an affiliate link on almost every single one that they have on that list. And this is where it's technology. I love technology, but then it also leads to this aspect where I hate it because people are going to reviews, review sites for um, honest feedback in regards to what to buy. But in truth, it's just, you know, whoever they have an affiliate with. And that, like I said, um, content monetization platforms. These are companies called like Skimlinks, um, Yieldkit, uh, Viglink is another one. What they do is, think of it this way. Yeah, no. Skimlink, Viglink, V-I-G, L-I-N-K, and Yieldkit. And what these companies are is there's me, the merchant. They join my program. They take all of my links and put it into their program, and then they bring affiliates on underneath them. What this allows the affiliates to do is to have access to a lot of programs without actually having to join those programs. Um, this is another one I have love-hate relationship because you can't control who's joining their program. Um, I have been able to negotiate with like skim links that we don't allow coupon sites. We have to have these relationships because a good example is 9to5Mac, which is a huge person for our market. They use skim links for all their ads. So for us, we have to be within these markets. For those who are joining affiliates, um, affiliate programs, it's good for you to be on these because it gives you a, a wider range in regards to what you can actually pull from. Um, it allows you to advertise things about food and not have to go join an individual food network. So, approve or deny. Um, this one always kind of throws people because they're like, oh, you only approve people with tons of traffic. Actually, no. I love micro-influencers. It goes back to that content marketing, that content creators. I don't care if you have 300 a month or 30 million. And this, again, this is just me. Because if you're reaching out and you're active, your 300 people could be the most raving fans in the entire world. I don't know that. So I'm not going to overlook somebody who only has 300 people visiting their site on a month. I'm not going to do that. Um, so that's not one of my criteria. I don't necessarily look at how many people are coming to your site. But number one, I look to see if you're in my niche. Um, if you are a food blog, and you have zero articles about technology, you most likely are not going to be a part of my, my program. Uh, you can email me back and say, you know what, I really love Text Expander. I just want to like, advertise you. I'm all for it. Then you can join. But for the most part, those type of blogs don't fit in within my niche. Do you have traffic? If I see zero, then we have a problem. Um, that's kind of my threshold. Um, are you active? This is a big one. If you're if you're never posting on your blog, that also means that you, you don't have anybody following you. So I'm, you're probably not going to be part of the program. Um, social media reach. I would say about 30% of my affiliates don't have a web page. They have, uh, I have one affiliate who's only on Reddit and Twitter, and he's within my top 10 as far as referring links because he has figured out Reddit. He's like a, what they call a super affiliate because he has built up a... This is so outside me. I don't fully understand Reddit. Reddit has karma. He has built up his karma so people trust him. So when he posts my link on it, he gets a lot of clicks on it. So he ends up being a really great affiliate for me because I'm not in the Reddit world, obviously, since I don't even know how it works. Huh? <laughs> um, domain rating. So higher is better. And Alexa rating, lower is better. So these are just two ratings, and I'll actually show you a picture here pretty soon of what both of those look like. Any questions so far? I don't want to like go through this and you're like, I have no idea what she's talking about. Okay. Going back to um, make sure you have the time to nurture your affiliates. If you're part of a program and they never contact you, um, they most likely are not completely in touch in regards to the program. Um, I onboard my affiliates, they get four emails. 
the four emails talk about how they can get text expander for free, how they can get PDF pin for free, and how they can get a free $10. The free $10 is I asked you for your birthday and your legitimate email address. And I asked for those two things. Number one, I need to be able to contact you, so I need your email address. And usually when they apply on ShareASale, they're using like a sub email that's like the throwaway one. I want the real one. But the birthday is, I give them bonuses on their birthday because everybody likes a free prize on their birthday. So um, monthly newsletter, um, I actually have now sent, I sent out actually weekly newsletters. And what these newsletters have is me telling them hey, here are ideas for blog articles that you can create for our product. You are not an expert in my product, I am. And I need to give you ideas on how to best position those on your site. Um, again, bonuses. I know I've said it a lot, um, but I like bonuses because it makes people feel good. It makes them remember you versus somebody else. And then just building the relationship. Um, there's some affiliates I talk to almost on a weekly basis, one-on-one, -on -one, just because they're doing enough on their site, they're wanting information, and again, I'm working for you, not the other way around, so it's my job to give you as much information as possible. Okay, so if you ever want to learn how to set up a program, this book is so old, but it is literally the only book out there. Um, affiliate program management, one hour a day. Uh, this is actually the one I read to get started, and it's phenomenal. And I've actually had the opportunity to meet Gino several times at conferences, and he actually teaches on a bigger scale now. But this is the best book. It's like, again, it's outdated, it's old, but it still applies to 90% of everything that still goes on in affiliate marketing. Okay, software that I use. The first one is you need, as an affiliate mark manager, I need a CRM. I need to know who all my people are. I need to know all the information about them. There's two products that are out there. There's Media Rails, which is owned by Impact, um, which is $1,500 a month, which nobody wants to pay $1,500 a month for a CRM. Or there's Buzzstream, which is $25 a month. So we're gonna go ahead and go with a $25 plan. When I add a potential affiliate to my CRM, it gives me all this information. It tells me what they're following on Twitter is. It tells me um, how active on their site. It gives me domain authority. It gives me Alexa rank. Pretty much all the stats that I need to understand a website is right here. It just pulls it in. It just pulls it in, yep. It'll also scrape the website to find potential emails for the person, um, Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, anything within social media. So like in the footer, almost everybody has their Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It'll actually pull those links in so that it's in my CRM. So I can go follow them on Twitter or I can follow them on Facebook. Um, and the big one is, so like this is nine to five Mac. Their domain authority, remember I said um, lower is better? No, that's not right. Higher is better. Higher is better, you're right. <laughs> so they, it's out of a score of 100. So 9 to 5 Mac is 92. That would be like the dream affiliate. Um, Alexa rank, smaller is better. So the smaller you are, that means more popular you are. So they're at 5,000. Um, I think Google, Google's actually number one, which I think is kind of cheating. But uh, post frequency, this is what I pay attention to the most. I want to know how often they're posting. So 9 to 5 Mac posts every hour, which is insane. So, the second program I use is Text Expander. Um, oh, I didn't want that to start yet. Hold on. We'll come back to that screen. Um, at the last slide here, this screen will actually come up so you can actually take a picture of it if you want to because I have some coupon codes. Okay, so the second program I use is Text Expander. Um, this is my program. What Text Expander does is it allows you to put everything you type on a regular basis into Text Expander and create an abbreviation. Um, and I'm actually going to restart the video, and I apologize for this. Text Expander, one word. What's the purpose of it again? I'm sorry. Yeah, so in this day and age, you're not answering emails. You're not answering questions or recruiting all in the same place. 
So a good example is a customer can ask me a question on Facebook or an email or my help desk. This allows you to create all those canned responses and put them into our software. And it runs in the back of your, your it's, a, it's an app and it runs in the background. You create an abbreviation and that way you can actually respond to all those questions no matter where you're at. You just have to have a text field. So um, I'm gonna let this run through. And what this is showing is me, I have to recruit through email and I recruit through contact forms because not everybody has their email on their site. So with Text Expander, it allows me to do both of those. So that's what this is gonna show. So this is my snippet. This is my recruitment email. And I've created a, a abbreviation of AFF.REC. So all I have to do is type AFFREC and you see it puts it into Gmail. Now I'm gonna to go to a contact form and type AFF.REC, put in Bob's name, press okay, and there's my recruitment email. Um, I do have a coupon for one year free of this. Um, again, I'll show this at the end. Uh, Text Expander, you can use it for everything. I use it for my name. I don't, I don't type my name anymore. I type .n and it puts in my name. Same with phone number, .p, and it puts in my phone number. It's just, just this way to actually automate and, and shorten the things you have to type on a regular basis. It's $40 a year. Okay, next one I use is Workspaces. This is a Mac only. It allows you to automate the things you do often. So it's a program here. So I'm gonna create one here for my workflow. It allows me to pick uh, different formats. So like a file, a folder, a website. And I've created one already called Morning Routine. So I go to Workspaces, I click Start. It opens all these web pages for me workspaces and it's only for Mac. Unfortunately, I apologize. <laughs> um, and I include this one here because what was happening is for me to create a coupon for an affiliate, it requires me to open up five different things. There's one application and four web pages. So I can't exactly do it in Chrome because I can't open up that application. But with workspaces, it allows me to open up everything that I need at one time do what I need and then close everything down. And I create these, these workspaces for everything that I do. So, so that's one that I use on a regular basis. And then Chrome extensions. These are my absolute two favorite ones. Um, if, and as an affiliate, I highly suggest you look at both of these. Number one, look up your website. Number two, look up your competitor's website. Similar web gives you traffic rank and website analysis. Similar sites will give you sites that are like yours. If you don't know who your competitor is, go to the Chrome extension for similar sites and you will see everybody who's basically a competitor of yours once you put in your website. And I use these on a regular basis. Ex that? Say that again. Say that, I'm sorry. No. You use this tool or another website to find out your competitor? No, I use these two tools. So like when I'm trying to recruit new affiliates and I'm trying to find new affiliates to do that for, I'll take an existing affiliate and put it into similar sites and look to see who their competitors are because those are the people that I want to recruit next. Chrome yes, Chrome extensions, yep. There might be, um, what's that other one? What's the other browser? It just totally left my head. No, Firefox, thank you. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's Sunday at nine o'clock guys. <laughs> Okay, so remember how I said I was gonna go ahead and put in a slide if you wanna be an affiliate? The most important things, be a great micro-influencer. Um, micro-influencers are becoming much more popular in regards to the influencer world. As an affiliate, you are an influencer. Um, there's kind of a division happening right now in the affiliate wor world in regards to what is an affiliate and what is an influencer. Um, I just got back from a conference where they talked in length about this. They're seeing affiliates as loyalty and rewards and coupon sites. And they're kind of like at the bottom of the barrel. And they're taking everybody else, the content creators, the uh, review sites, and they're moving up to the influencer level. So 
you are an influ influencer. You're just getting paid a little differently. Because then in our minds, an influencer is the one who does a campaign and gets paid up front. You are an influencer who gets paid on the back end. You make a sale, you get the money. So it's just a difference in how you're getting paid. And it's something that I'm having to retrain myself as far as wording because it's becoming more and more prevalent in regards to our conversations in-house of what that influencer is. So be a great micro-influencer. Um, if you're supporting a technology program, my number one suggestion is write tutorials for it. Write lots of tutorials for it. Yeah, so like with my software for Text Expander, the best way for you to rank higher as far as SEO is to create tutorials. Because not everybody's doing this, especially if it's a little less known software, your barrier to entry in regards to getting higher SEO is going to be lower. Uh, we don't have enough affiliates writing tutorials for it. And the thing is, our company has only so much bandwidth to create tutorials. And the thing is, too, we can't think of all the ways that you can use Text Expander in a use case basis. We know those things, but you guys, the users of Text Expander, see things that we never see. You know, it's that way with all software. Um, I got my start in the technology industry with a tutorial website, finding the back ways into a software, all these little things that you could do that the company themselves didn't even know about. So write really great tutorials. Um, yeah? I would do both um, on, the same article. Mm -hmm, on the same article because what this allows is that you can create a video and put it on YouTube. Okay. Um, that's going to give you um, a foundation on YouTube. Embed that on your site, um, but also on your YouTube link to the text because that's also going to give you a backlink. Okay. So on YouTube, you've got your video. At the bottom of it, you say, hey, to read the text version of this or the transcript, go to this blog article. So you don't actually put the transcript in YouTube? Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, you just link to it okay. down in your description. Um, you link to that article, you embed the video on your page, you do a transcript of it. And the reason why you want to do video and transcript, how many of you guys love videos for tutorials? How many of you prefer text? I am a text person, and in fact, if all my choices is a video, I get very frustrated because I am just, I'm a visual word person. I need to see screenshots of things. So you want to try to, if you can, go both ways. So try to do both, and it benefits you to do both. Um, especially if you're doing text, you're getting that, that keyword aspect. Yep. Any other questions on that? Okay. Keep a schedule. Post on a regular basis. Uh, this is really important no matter what uh, platform you're on, whether it's social media, your website, it just doesn't matter. You need to be keeping a schedule. Um, you are running a business. Uh, if you did not post your hours for your business, if you're brick and mortar and you're just open whenever, how do you know when your customers are going to show up? Because they don't know what your hours are. So every Monday, I'm going to go ahead and post a new article. And that's your goal for the week, is post a new article. Um, expect more from your affiliate manager. That's me. I'm the one who's running that program. If you want to know, hey, Stacy, I'm writing this article and I need some keywords, I need to know how to really rank high for this um, organically, what keywords should I be using? I should be replying back to you. Um, any affiliate manage, manager should. Um, ask for lots of data. Here's the one thing that I do for my program because it's really important because you guys don't have this data. When somebody makes a sale, you have no idea who that person is. Your article could be about productivity for law professors. But in truth, the person who's actually purchasing is a housewife who is doing a blog about technology. So you've got an article, but you're actually converting with somebody else. I have that data, and I need to share that with you.
because that means you think your customer persona is this, but in truth, it's actually this. So start writing articles fitting that customer persona. Um, again, you, you can't get that information unless I give it to you. Um, and as an affiliate, uh, that's important information. Companies like Amazon are not going to give you this information. When I refer to these, these are smaller programs. Um, uh, so, um, okay. I don't give I don't give names or anything, and I don't give emails, but I will give the customer persona because that's that's and it's widely available. I mean, as far as in house. Um, so again, I told you I was going to bring up this slide, Text Expander, uh, one year free. Just use that code. Um, and I've worked with Workspaces. Um, uh, we're actually featuring them in a promotion, thirty percent off. It's a uh, again, unfortunately, only on the Mac. What other questions do you have? Pick my brain, guys. Yes? You said you disallow your affiliates from advertising in other places. Have you ever considered allowing that in places that you might not have time to advertise? Yes. Um, so we do have one affiliate. Um, it's CYBBA, C-Y-B-B-A. They are doing actually paid retargeting ads. Um, we're actually not continuing that partnership because they also do view through and it's not converting what like we want them to. So they do click through and they do view through. So what view through is, is a company puts a banner out there, you see this banner, and then at some point in time you come back and actually purchase. You never clicked on the banner, but you purchase. That's a view through. So they're claiming ownership of that and we're not seeing the right conversions in regards to that. So yes, we will work on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but it has to be by permission only. And that's in our terms too. Yeah, so the two big ones, become an affiliate of share sale and affiliate of impact. Those are the, the two big ones because they're going to have a huge marketplace. You can actually go in and search by keyword once you become an affiliate. Um, once you do the search, then you can go ahead and apply to be an affiliate. Uh, and kind of going back to the, my terms in regards to who I accept into a program is different than another one. Um, but if they're usually, uh, there's not a whole lot of friction getting in with most of them. There is friction for some of them, but apply. But those are your two biggest, biggest pools. And then from there, if you're finding that Let's say you want to, there's a boutique site that just has an affiliate program that's self-hosted. Then you go ahead and join that one. But to start out, that's where I would start. Is there a on how to get oh, that one's a hard one. It's, you know, it's, it's the long game. Um, and that's how I've always seen affiliate marketing is that it's, you have to get your, your keywords, your SEO up, getting the organic, but be, um, you know, we have no issues with you posting on social media. Again, back to our affiliate who posts on Reddit. You just have to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's not gross. Um, and marketing is gross, just so you know, everybody, marketing is gross. Um, <laughs> so figure out ways to do it smoothly where it's fluid and it doesn't like come off like, oh my gosh, Stacy is talking about her Scentsy products again and she wants me to buy. Um, don't, don't be that person. So, um, but j again, if you go back to those four, post on a regular schedule, make sure your content is good. Um, start thinking about those keywords that you really want to rank. Go for the low hanging fruit keywords. Um, you are never going to be number one for air, air filters. So what are those other keywords that are out there for air filter that you can actually start plugging into? So yeah. Within share of sale and impact, you can go in and create those banners. They have that available. Mm -hmm. that yeah, and in fact, I think I can just, I'll just hop into our program. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, 
Um, if you're not using 1Password yet, you need to be using 1Password, just so you all know. LastPass? I, I, was, I started out with LastPass and our company uses 1Password, so I kind of moved over to that world. It's a password manager. Yeah. So, um, so for me as a manager, I can come back here and upload banners. So um, how do I do this? Do you know? Oh, OK. Brings up that one. Okay, then you're out on the computer, then you go back. If you want to do it on your end, I don't know why. Are you looking to go back to your browser? Are you looking to go back to your browser? Oh, no, it's too big. Is it too big? I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh -uh. I was just going to hop on a browser. Anyways, so on the back end, you can actually um, add your banners. And then as a merchant or as an affiliate, when you log in, you can actually find all the banners for the affiliate. I'm not for sure why. It, um, no, but I think that's fine. I'm at the end of it anyways. Yep, you can add your creatives to it. And the, it's what they refer to as creatives. It can be banners, it can be text ads, it can be HTML ads. Yep. Yeah, you have a question? Yep. Yep, um, right now about 10% of our sales come from the affiliate program, that's increasing. Uh, so a little backstory, I came on to Smile a year and a half ago. Uh, they had one person running their entire sales department so I came on to take on the affiliate. So essentially I started from zero because we actually moved from impact over to share a sale because I did a lot of pruning in regards to the, the affiliates. Um, it's increasing 10% month over month, which is really important. Um, but it, again, it goes to the philosophy that I've established in regards to nurturing my affiliate. There's a big difference in regards to how much you can actually earn when you're actually paying attention to your affiliates versus not a pay, paying attention to them. Um, and then I've been doing this for four years. I actually started at a different e-commerce company selling uh, sitstay.com. They sold pet supplies, dog supplies, and I started the affiliate program there, so. Any other questions? Okay, well thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate it. Um, tidbits created one um, where it's all the misspelled words that you could ever misspell. There's like 4,000 words on it. So last night I was typing the word similar and kept misspelling it and it would fix it for me. So that's one of the things that Text Expander does too. Um, I misspell the word affiliate all the time, <laughs> which, which is crazy. And I can't spell entrepreneurship either. Um, so I have snippets that will fix those because I know what, how I misspell it on a regular basis. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, there's a WordPress one in there too. You're welcome. Exactly, yep. Any text field? Um, no. Go ahead. Uh, for us personally, it's coaches and consultants. I meant from like, oh. like, as me as an affiliate. Oh yeah. Um, in fact, go to PMA. It's the. Let me see what it is. They just released a report on this. 
Professional Performance Marketing Association, or what is it, is what it is. They just put out a report that actually breaks it down in regards. Number one is fashion. Uh, and it has the highest numbers as well. Performance Marketing for, Association. Uh, pardon me? Association. Yeah, Performance Marketing Association. They just spent like, oh God, it's like $75,000 putting this report together. I mean, it's a huge, incredible amount of money. But it, it'll read the report. It'll I'm actually break it down. Our best affiliates, a really great example is one of our best affiliates. He's an author who created a book about holistic medication or medicine, and he has a subscription plan on his site. He has put all of his canned responses that deal with his book, and that his because doctors sign up for a subscription. He's put everything that a doctor would need to reply back to a patient into Text Expander. So when they sign up for a subscription, in order to get all of that information, they also have to buy Text Expander. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> it is very smart. Mm -hmm. We've also seen franchises use it. So all of their documentation that uh, they want to stay the same, because you can actually lock down a snippet so nobody can change it. So they put all of their information that a franchisee would need in order like contracts and documentation that they have to change or send out into Text Expander and then they give that to all the franchisees. So, but our coaches and consultants are the biggest ones for us just because our product is one where it's word of mouth. So they're the ones that are, are really pushing us. But again, the tutorial side of it, um, teaching people how to use a program, especially when other people aren't doing it. That's, that's my biggest suggestion. 40% on average? Yes, no. Uh, well, <laughs> my, <laughs> Yes, 20% is average. However, like I said, my top five are at 50%, just oh. because of how much effort and time they're putting into it. Again, it goes back to if you're putting time and effort into something, I, I'm gonna reward you for that because you know, you're working your ass off, so why wouldn't I? Oh, of course. Yes. Yes. And in fact, well, I don't know how to do it. I can just do it when I'm. Well, it won't do that. Okay. Um, our number one customer is Shopify. Mm -hmm. um, their support team actually uses it because it also has an inline search. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't do the automation side of things. However, if you do have customer support, they can actually do a search in regards to that can right. That can respond, and then you just type in the abbreviation and it'll help you out. Yeah, that's so it'll be easier. Yeah. It would be four months to find something that would change. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, the, the smart life caps are a little bit more expensive. Yeah. So it might be that you have to look at a, a tiered defense. Okay. Yeah. How can I save a little bit of time working for it versus like a lot of time? Yeah. You have a good search. I do, yeah. Oh. There's a link at the bottom here for our program. On the other side. Thank you. I always think that my presentation is going to be like five minutes. I'll like rush through it like, oh no. <laughs> Into their system, yeah, and you have one company, and you click. 
Why not? Same with your company? Yes. Well, well not mine. I work for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just and then, in, 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 what's the difference between yeah. that and a smile? So, smile is actually the company, and then the product is just the company. So, smile has more. Yeah, it has to be with the commercial The computer says there is, but the card, okay, so there's not.
probably that you have to have your SPC. I'm not sure what Sheriff is with the CCU. Yeah, it's CCU. Especially like with more people going to like the chat systems. Yep. Yep. And since it works on every tech skill, we can answer those same questions on social media and chat. Mm -hmm. and, email. Mm -hmm. and we even work with like Send Us. They're one of our customers, mainly because they have canned responses, but it only works in Zendesk. So if you have your customer support working in social media, they don't have access to that same response that's in Zendesk. The Texas scanner allows you to do that. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. That's fun. Thank you for all the questions. Thank you. You're welcome. I am very curious to see if I can get a whale. Not, I'm not really interested in like the whole idea of like digital affiliate where you're putting links and everything and like trying to little tiny right. bite sized pieces. That's not really something that I feel like I've, I've put so, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm struggling because I'm, I'm all about productivity and not wasting time. And my thought is like I would be able to get one big one with a ton of clients and then basically it's. I mean, I'm, I'm, am I assuming correctly that it's you pay annually if they pay annually, or? I think that's right. Okay, yep. so so is it so if they have an annual subscription, you just break down into twelve and then divide. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, so actually no. If they come and buy a year subscription, you get commission off every year. Okay. Yes. And then if they renew, is it just a one-time commission, or? It's a one-time commission at this time. I'm looking to get that changed. A smaller percentage, but. Yeah. That would be very interesting. That's that's my lifestyle that I'm looking to create is yep. more residual, and then that incentivizes me to like make it long term versus just trying to give you a, a customer who buys and then doesn't. Yeah. yeah. If there's a software that you use on a regular basis, look and see if they have an affiliate program because most of them are set on the lifetime value commission, which is when you get the lifetime value of a customer. Um, and you can, again, it goes back to not being gross. Um, yeah, I, I, I love marketing, but I hate gross marketing. Exactly. I hate it. So if you're, I never suggest anything that is like unique. Okay. Um, so for me, what's great is that 